Hi, and welcome to Test Talk. I'm Ed Mobley, and I'm here with my colleague, Justin Hankey. Justin, welcome to Test Talk. Thanks for having me. So today we're going to talk about self-healing automation. automation. It sounds really good. It, it sounds really cool, right? Yeah, what's it all about? Yeah, so, so I'm really excited to talk about it. So the idea is, uh, you know, one of the biggest uh, impacts to automation, ROI, and realizing benefit is uh, the maintenance associated with it. So today that's done a lot of manu a lot manually. It just kind of detracts from the value of automation, but we've come up with a way to automate the maintenance of automation uh, to uh, just kind of remove that manual dependency uh, and, and save you some, some time and effort. Yeah, because that's, that's a common critique you hear about automation. It's like just automation in general. It's like it's fragile, yeah. and you end up spending more time constantly fixing it than you yeah. than you may actually save on on the back end. But in the conversations we've had about had around self healing automation, this really addresses that that head on. Could you could you explain that a bit? Yeah, absolutely. So um, there there's some kind of uh, basic ways that people, we try to handle it when we write scripts. We use wildcards, we use regular expressions to handle variation in object names or however we identify those objects, but it doesn't really address the problem. It just tries to kind of band-aid it a little bit. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but... And those are the traditional approaches that, yes, that, that yes, you mentioned. Yeah, yes, And so uh, the, the, what we've developed is a way to, to analyze and understand what your options are on the page. If I can't find the object I'm looking for, what are the objects that are available? And let's find the one that's most similar to that and uh, use that one instead. So it, it happens in a fraction of a second and it takes care of all the future scripts um, to, to make sure they use the right object in the future. And, and now, is this capability fully automated, or are there some inflection points where it, it, it may still require you know, some type of, of interaction from a, from a human? So the way that we've uh, implemented it uh, so far, it, it, it tries on its own to interact with whatever object it thinks is best suited. Um, uh, in the case where, where it didn't select the right object or couldn't find a, one that's similar enough, um, there's still like the ability to suggest one to, to uh, kind of manually interrupt that process. But uh, for the most part, it tries to continue on its own just to kind of uh, streamline the process. And the idea is uh, even if um, even if there's other options, as long as it chooses one and continues, uh, it's going to alleviate a lot of that effort. Right. I mean, and, and so, so really the, the, the need for, for manual interaction would would be more of of the exception, right? Yes, yeah. That, that's rather that's than the rule. So, say, yeah. so it, it would it would save you a lot of effort. And I guess, but metaphorically speaking, the, the way it works is, you know, you could be going to a website that you're very familiar with, and let's say they they move the login screen from say the you know bottom left corner to the top right corner. Well, yeah. you just know to to look yeah, you in. You can figure that out. Yeah. You can figure it out. And so, if I understand it uh, properly, that's that's kind of what the what the tool's doing. Yeah, it has a little bit more intelligence behind it. Uh, you know, the traditional ways that a lot of automation tools identify objects is by looking for a specific name or some unique attribute of that. And if that isn't there anymore, all of a sudden it breaks and doesn't work. So this applies a little bit of in intelligence and analysis to that process to say, this is what I'm looking for, but if I can't find it, I'm going to think about it a little bit and figure out what the best option is. And, and I know in this case, we're, we're talking about automated uh, testing at the at the interface level, you know, and a lot of folks would say, "Well, you know, that's why you don't do it at the interface level because it it it, it breaks." But you know, we we were chatting. It's like sometimes, particularly if you're using it in the context of UAT or or it maybe if you're late automation adopter, that I mean, that's really what sometimes it's the best option, and sometimes yeah. it may, may be the only option. Yeah, that's true. And, um, you know, other automation options uh, like using APIs or, or other things, those are still valid things to use. There's a time and place for those kinds of things. But as you pointed out, there's sometimes that you need to do UI automation um, because ultimately at some point you need to also validate those kind of processes. And the self-healing is really focused on that kind of automation because it is so fragile. It helps alleviate those pain points and makes it a more uh, useful thing to do. So for UAT efforts, uh, maybe organizations that are somewhat late adopters, it, it seems like the, the self-healing approach is... Yeah, it helps a lot. It, it um, makes it a more reasonable approach, yeah. And then uh, I understand that there's uh, 
something that's indeed unique about our approach. Maybe you can uh, share a bit about that. Yeah, that's a great point. So, uh, so we we did some research uh, and we have filed a patent for it. Um, we uh, there, this approach is pretty unique in that the components that we brought together to to make this a, a usable tool um, that uh, that can be used for either traditional UI automation or even RPA, since RPA uses uh, a lot of the same object identification processes, the same concept applies. Yeah, that's actually a good point that you mentioned RPA, because a lot of folks ask us, you know, where does the RPA play in context of automation? automation. And I, I know there's still a lot of discussion around that, but it's very interesting that, that this approach could uh, work both with uh, RPA efforts as, as well as traditional Absolutely. automation yeah. efforts. Yeah. So let's get into a bit of detail about exactly how it works. Well, what, what exactly is it looking for when, you know, to, to ascertain changes? Sure, so so unlike some of the approaches I mentioned earlier where you just use regular expressions or, or wild cards to kind of handle variation, this looks at the objects more holistically. So it'll look through uh, various different properties of these objects to understand how similar each of them are and compare them to uh, the object that can't be found at the moment. So it looks at all these, these different attributes and properties of these objects. Uh, we weight and score them and kind of come up with a similarity score to uh, to rank them and then choose the one that ends up being the most simple. Well, well, Justin, that was really, really informative. And for those of you who would like to learn more, we have a, a detailed uh, white paper at the link below. Please send us your, your questions. Uh, we'd certainly like to like to hear Absolutely. from you. I mean, this is this is a very, very uh, interesting topic. Again, thanks for spending time with us. We'll see you on the next episode of Test Talk.